Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. And it's a great pleasure for me uh, to be part of this uh, yeah, first virtual Bitcoin conference after last time we had it in our premises uh, at BNLB. Um, and I will focus a bit more on a, on a broader um, kind of economic sphere where we are with the economy right now in the view uh, of the coronavirus and uh, what measures have been taken both from central bankers and fiscal politicians. Um, and if this whole thing might work in the short term and in the long term to stabilize the economy, or if out of those um, kind of rescue measures, uh, we might get more problems over time uh, than we had before. and. Uh, Going to the more Bitcoin specific talks, uh, you all probably know Manuel, he will talk tomorrow. Uh, he and our research team uh, is having the helmet on uh, on the more specific issues, uh, but we are uh, of course debating uh, the issues uh, on a yeah, permanent level. Uh, we try to be involved in everything what's going on. So, but let me start with the current stage of the economy. Um, that looks pretty dire. Um, we are just getting um, several economic indicators uh, feeding in. We had the uh, sentiment indicators, but probably the most dramatic uh, view on what happened with the implication from the virus itself uh, and the lockdowns that were taken in order to prevent the spreading of the virus. Uh, we have seen an unprecedented fall uh, in employment in the US. Um, it's more than 20 million uh, for the time being. Uh, this Friday, we'll probably uh, get even more shocking uh, figures out of this. Uh, for the time being, um, the amount of jobs lost in the US is as large as the number of jobs lost in Spain um, in terms of the whole labor force there. So it's it's quite a dramatic move there. If you look, for example, to Germany, um, the increase in unemployment so far uh, is pretty limited, uh, but there uh, we have quite a significant increase in the number of short shift workers. Um, and again, here we have unprecedented uh, economic consequences, what has just happened uh, in the current environment and what uh, is going on right now out in the economy. So that what happened was mainly taking place um, in the second half of March and I think in April. And now the question is, how do we get out of this again? And uh, many participants in the markets um, have this kind of the hope that we have a kind of a reshaped recovery. Um, so looking to China in that respect is uh, just uh, suggesting uh, that things are uh, going pretty quickly, uh, but we see that in most industrialized countries, um, we do not see this kickstart of the economy uh, to happen anytime soon. And I think there are a couple of uh, criteria that have to be met before we get back to an economic recovery. First of all, we have to ease the lockdowns, and this is now underway in uh, many uh, areas. Uh, but on top of this, we have to get back purchasing power of the private sector, and we have to restall uh, the production chains again. And I think all this uh, has to happen in order to get the economy back working. And we of the major uh, things to get back here is that we get support from the fiscal and monetary authorities. And what we have seen from the fiscal side is, uh, again, pretty unprecedented. We see massive, massive fiscal packages um, really heading among or heading off everyone is uh, Japan, who just came up with another fiscal package uh, last week. If you combine all the measures they have, you this add up to a figure around almost 40% of 2019 GDP. In the US, we also have seen several fiscal packages uh, that were bundled together. It's uh, the total around 20, 22% uh, of GDP. And compared to this, 
uh, the European countries uh, have much smaller packages. And uh, this has partly to do uh, with the constraints uh, those countries have on their own uh, fiscal situation. And uh, Germany, yeah, given their better fiscal stance before the crisis, uh, has more room uh, to come up here with measures. Um, Italy and Spain, they have much less. And they come up with this uh, idea of a recovery fund uh, last week. And if you add up this, um, you even not uh, at the US um, kind of levels, but you get closer to this, uh, at least in all of the places, including Italy, to kind of double uh, digit uh, fiscal stimulus. This fiscal stimulus, uh, which is likely uh, to stimulate the economy in the second half of this year, and probably has prevented a further fall in economic activity uh, in the second quarter when the shutdown uh, actually happened, this fiscal policy comes with some negative consequences. Um, and the negative consequence is that we have a massive increase in the deficits of the uh, government authorities. We see that the deficit figures uh, are skyrocketing everywhere. Uh, and this is uh, going to jeopardize as well, not just uh, the question of the liquidity provision uh, to those uh, institutions, but also uh, the question of uh, fiscal solidity and uh, the example of italy uh, i know we have a forecast that is much higher than the consensus is at the moment uh, we think that it is quite possible that we get um, a debt to gdp ratio close to 180 percent and this uh, actually in normal times would lead to a massive increase um, in financing costs of Italy. Um, and uh, a consequence of this would be uh, probably at some stage debt restructuring. Uh, and this could lead then to another wave of uh, an economic downturn and creating, creating a huge amount of pressure for the public, but also the private sector. In order now to keep the financing cost relatively easy, the central banks have decided to come up with huge um, stimulus programs on their own. And uh, here on this chart, you can see the developments from before the financial crisis that we have uh, heard uh, in many talks before uh, what has happened on the financial side. Um, we are now going really uh, in a kind of uh, stimulus packages uh, 2.0. And it's much, much uh, larger what we see right now, uh, both from the Fed uh, and from the ECB compared to that, what we have seen uh, after the uh, global financial crisis. Um, and uh, this is particularly the case in the US, where remember in 2008, uh, we had a couple of weeks going to Parliament where we debated uh, about the question of tariff, there would be a 750 billion program. Um, now, these days, the Fed comes up more or less uh, in, a, in a kind of a, of a side note uh, to say, that they come up with another trillion or so uh, in kind of programs. And this is not likely to end anytime soon. It's really there uh, for quite a while. And that suggests that we have here a permanent shift really in the monetary stance. What happens right now is really unprecedented and comes at a time where uh, the kind of the repercussions of the great or the global financial crisis uh, had not been kind of resolved. Looking at the balance sheet of the ECB, uh, they were not as aggressive as the Fed at the beginning, uh, but then with the sovereign debt crisis from 2013-14 onwards, they expanded their balance sheet in a massive way and again, uh, come up with huge triggers here. So if you would combine the amount of uh, the balance sheets uh, which they have, and we think there's a further expansion out there uh, in the next couple of years, uh, this would sum up to something like uh, 50 or about 50% of annual GDP. And by annual GDP, I mean the 2019 uh, figure here uh, for the US and of about 60% of the area-wide GDP for the euro area. Compare this with the Bank of Japan, where we have seen earlier that their debt um, is likely to increase massively because of the fiscal packages, and it's already quite high. So looking at the fiscal uh, deficit or the fiscal, not deficit, the fiscal uh, debt figures there, it's already around 200 
um, 30, 240% of GDP. And this is likely to go up even more uh, to something like 260% of annual GDP. So it's more than two and a half years uh, what they need to repay their debt if they ever would dare doing so. Um, and this is all only possible uh, because the central banks are buying this whole stuff. And uh, in case of the Japanese central bank, we think that the um, balance sheet of the Bank of Japan, what is already above 100% of annual GDP, uh, is likely to go to something like 120, 130% uh, over time. So this is uh, really a huge amount of intervention, what comes up from these measures. So in the short run, I think uh, we can see that there is a stabilization coming up from those policies. But the big question is, what are the longer term consequences? And uh, I think that what happens right here now uh, could really uh, jeopardize the trust. And this firm here, the, this, this trust is not uh, very high anyway, uh, but this might jeopardize the trust on a broader uh, basis in the current system. So what we see is that the criminal crisis uh, really hit the global economy at a stage when we still had not dealt with all of the consequences from the previous uh, recession, where we already uh, tried to uh, put a huge amount um, uh, kind of, uh, of measures uh, out there uh, just to keep the whole show going, to kick the can down the road. But the problem is the, the road is getting steeper by the day uh, and the can is always coming back. And we uh, simply try to continue that game uh, for quite a while. And we think, uh, yes, that there is a positive uh, implication from this massive monetary and fiscal stimulus programs right now uh, in order that they help to get us out of the crisis, to get back on a path of uh, um, economic recovery. But over time, uh, we will see that uh, we probably need this ultra loose monetary policy to continue because the debt what was piled up now uh, in the crisis both on the public and the private side uh, is it likely to evaporate uh, anytime soon and in order to reduce the debt burden uh, it will be the yes request to monetary politicians in the existing fiat money system um, to keep interest rates very low to buy a huge amount of assets so to expand the balance sheets and in order to dilute uh, the whole problems and this might actually lead to um, the case that uh, we may, may get more and more people who doubt uh, that this really system is likely to work and i think this is likely to increase these doubts uh, once we have lead uh, once we have reached the kind of the new steady state of growth and uh, this is probably in a I don't know, three, four years time um, from here, the case. And, and at that time, we probably have not seen any improvement of the debt ratio. So it will be very obvious to everyone uh, that all the measures we have taken um, has helped on a very short notice, but has uh, led us uh, back with a huge amount of debt. And in my view, uh, we may have uh, several ways to get out of this. Uh, one uh, would be that the whole thing um, with this uh, very massive um, increase of the monetary base uh, will lead in the end to inflation. We have seen after the global financial crisis that this was not the case. Uh, but uh, with all of the changes on the structural level right now, uh, looking at um, the global um, kind of uh, way to uh, global trade and all the other uh, things that are probably permanently uh, disrupted after the after the crisis, we might see uh, some price increases to come through and that uh, in the end uh, might lead to higher interest rates and uh, higher financing costs. And this might then lead to a collapse uh, of the high uh, debt uh, having institutions. Um, or uh, we uh, might see that they continue to pump even more money uh, into the system uh, in order to, yes, get this uh, bubble increasing even more. And one of the things that are likely to happen uh, during this course as we get more subject to fiscal dominance, and that uh, probably will mean that central bankers' uh, independence uh, will be more under threat. The way out there, um, yeah, could be structural breaks. And I don't think that this is going to happen next year or the year thereafter, uh, but in the next couple of years, 
um, this is likely uh, to take place. Um, and one way would be that we go within the existing system uh, through waves of debt restructuring uh, from both the private and uh, public sector entities, or we may get some kind of currency reforms, uh, what would be mainly within the existing uh, fiat monetary or existing central bank system. An alternative to this could be uh, that we get uh, non-centralized currencies and here Bitcoin could be uh, an attractive um, solution for many investors. And uh, and what, what I said before was about the value of Bitcoin asked really for this. I think it once uh, is determined by the trust in Bitcoin itself, but it's also determined by the trust uh, in central banks and the trust in the fiat money system. And what happens right now uh, with the uh, reaction of fiscal and monetary policymakers to the uh, corona crisis could really, in the medium term, undermine this trust in the existing system and uh, get a kind of a, a very fast uh, track to alternative systems like Bitcoin. 